Thank you. Thank you very much. Welcome everybody. I'm very really happy to be with you and I can share my experiences here. And uh, I would like to invite to join this workshop uh, with your mobile phones and with your laptops because you can uh, participate in some kind of uh, examples how to use technical digital tools, okay? So it's help for you just to try here some examples. Okay, so it's a big question for today, face-to-face -to -face versus online, and I try to find answer for this question. Are they versus, opposite or not? How can we implement in our uh, daily uh, teaching? Let's see. Um, here are some uh, data about my uh, experiences in education, in the university, and I do my uh, PhD studies now, uh, how to uh, teach uh, mathematics for engineering students, uh, and uh, uh, I uh, give uh, some experiential uh, mathematics courses for uh, uh, disadvantaged uh, students in a local science center, and uh, yeah, there are a lot of to do with uh, students. Okay, and let's see what's in front of us today. At first, we will discuss um, about the characteristics of uh, Generation Z, and when we know uh, that after that, uh, I uh, share some results of uh, researches and um, that I gained during uh, reading articles and during um, our projects and uh, my doctoral research. So some uh, results are from my researches. And uh, then I show you some tools that you can use in your courses. Uh, how to motivate Generation uh, Z. And if we will have more free time, then you can try alone and I can help you uh, if you have any uh, questions about these tools. At first, we need to define what is Generation Z? Who are they? And uh, here we can uh, see the different kind of uh, generations. Personally, I am part of Generation Y, but you can find which is your generation. And uh, when we see uh, that we are teachers in the university, uh, and uh, if we teach all our life in the university, we will teach more than three different generations. So it is important to understand what's the background of them and we need to implement this knowledge into our practice. So here is Generation Z who are the younger, youngest people uh, in uh, the universities but they are in uh, high, high schools as well. And the next generation alpha is coming soon here. Okay, let's, let's uh, uh, play a game together at first. Uh, what do you think, uh, think about what the characteristics of Generation Z are? Uh, so here is a, a website and you need to use your mobile phone or your laptop. So use this code uh, this website uh, code, and you can answer this question. What's your experience? It's what's the characteristics uh, this generation have? So based on your experiences, try to answer this question. And then we will see the answers uh, on a brainstorm uh, wall together, but just at first try to 
write in your laptop or uh, mm, mobile phone this website, Answer Garden. So this is a tool to collect opinions and experiences uh, about the topic in short answers. So write short answers, uh, only a word. If everybody tipped the website, then I can show you the answers that we got. Okay. Okay, here are some answers. And if they, if you type answers, they, they will be here. Could you show the code again? Uh, of course. Okay, the code is 2200105. More and more answers is coming. So here we can see the answers that you sent, so we can check what the experiences of others about this generation. So it's a YouTube generation, technologically so, playing games, no future plans, short focus span, we will go back to that, multitasking, gender sensitive, individualistic, smartphone addiction, identity crisis, technology, social media, long study motivation, and like technology, super, supersonic. So that's your experiences. And, and it came from, from real life. And uh, it's important uh, to check uh, what's, uh, yes, uh, these are connected only uh, these um, uh, characteristics uh, are connected to all uh, areas of life. But uh, it is important that um, what kind of characteristics are connected to uh, education. So in the next uh, question, what kind of learning characteristics does this generation have? So it is not the same. So we spoke in the previous question about characteristics, uh, characteristics and now learning characteristics. So I would like to uh, find your uh, answers. And here is a QR code. If you had the QR code reader, so it is easy to open or use this uh, short uh, website bit that uh, lie and so on. So then you will see this kind of board where you can uh, write your answers. Put a post-it on the wall and write your answers. Okay, so use the QR code or the short version of uh, the website. When you, when you get a uh, on the right side, you can find post-its and just take it and put on the board. And you can then write. You can use more post-its if you need, or you can uh, use one only if you want to use one. Okay, there are some post-its, super. You can use different uh, colors for your post-it. Technology, uh, technology needs uh, interactivity, uh, more motivation to learn, self-confidence, uh, technology, more technology that they use, not easy to motivate them, and need authentic assignments. Supersonic, yeah. These are all different kind of characteristics of them. Aha, some of them are silent learners, others with strong opinions. Perfect. 
Okay, and there are some here, short attention span. Okay, I just move upper these post-its to be seen others as well. Okay, so we can connect to these answers. Uh, as we see the articles and researches about what's the learning uh, characteristics and preferences of this generation, uh, we can find these answers. But if we look at the local, uh, if we uh, look at um, uh, the place where these researches were made, we find that everywhere in the world find different uh, learning characteristics. So I try to find what are the common, which are common uh, across the world, which are uh, the most important learning characteristics where every, uh, everywhere uh, uh, is uh, seen. And uh, let's see. Uh, what are the learning preferences of Generation Z? I collected uh, eight of them. Uh, these are lessons adapted to short attention span that you mentioned in the previous task. Visual learning methods, it's really, really important um, because uh, we live in a visual um, world and everywhere there are visual things that we have to understand and we have to reflect on visual uh, information all the time. The next one is frequent assessment. So it's important for them to get back, to get feedback from the teachers and it is important frequently. And the next one is active learning and problem-based learning. They don't like sitting and just listening, but they want to be part of the learning process. And intrapersonal learning, uh, it is important for them. So it means that they need time when they can think alone and think about a topic and then share his or her opinion. So it's for, uh, important for them. The next one is connections and applied knowledge. So it's important for them to find the connections between the topics, uh, not separate topics, but wh why is it important in real life? They like connecting uh, to the real life, to their, uh, uh, to their um, occupation in the future. Uh, the next one is personal communication. So they like communicate face to face. It's important for them. And the last one is online learning and digital technology. So that was not a question for you because you brought uh, these uh, characteristics of them. And here was the question that personal communication and online learning is versus opposite or what's that? So we try to uh, find an answer for that. How can we connect uh, these two? But uh, the tools that I would like to show you uh, will um, uh, promote and uh, support the other um, uh, preferences as well. So we can focus all of them with only one tool. Okay, so Let's see some uh, examples how to uh, use this uh, knowledge about their preferences. But at first, I would like to know that which tools do you know and which not. So I brought a lot of tools and now it's important for me to know that some of them you use and some of them not. So here we use a voting system, Mentimeter. So just go to www.menti.com and use this code. And the question is that, what, um, 
What tools do you use in your lessons? What tools do you use in your lessons? That's the question for you. Okay. Then we see uh, the most uh, popular for you is Mentimeter and there are some others which are uh, used by you but some of them uh, is new for you totally. Uh, so I will show you and how to use it, how I used in my um, lessons and uh, I share some experiences about them. Yes, Mentimeter, that's the uh, most popular. Okay. Let's see. Okay. Some informations. Uh, here on the left side you will see this uh, smartphone all the time from this point of uh, the presentation and here there will be listed what kind of learning preferences can be supported by this kind of uh, tool. So Mentimeter can be supported, uh, uh, can support this kind of learning preferences. Okay, you will see the uh, similar um, uh, picture on the other uh, slides as well. Okay, let's see Pearl Trees. It's it's uh, some kind of collections that uh, you can make. Uh, here you can use a QR code or uh, this uh, a short uh, um, website and you can go to this um, uh, web page. And uh, I collected all of the tools that I brought to you today here. So later you can use this uh, collection if you would like to go back and remember what we have used here. Uh, so here uh, are the tools that I collected for today for you. Okay, so this is uh, uh, you can make collections for your students. If there are more uh, different kind of topics and you uh, would like to collect in one place, it's, uh, it can work in this uh, uh, tool. So that's Pearl Trades. Yeah, and how can it support uh, learning of uh, Generation Z, especially visual learning, interpersonal learning, and online learning? Okay. Next one, Kahoot. Kahoot is one of the most uh, favorite and most used uh, um, tool, online tool. And uh, I brought for you uh, two different kind of uh, Kahoot that I made for you that I use in my classes. Uh, they are special in some cases because that's uh, not the original uh, version of uh, Kahoot when uh, the student answer a uh, loan question, but I would like to uh, connect uh, the intrapersonal learning with the uh, uh, interpersonal learning. So think alone and then make some uh, conversations. So it's some kind of new how to use uh, Kahoot. Uh, I don't know if uh, somebody, as I saw, uh, used uh, Kahoot before. How do you use? That's a question for you. How do you use Kahoot, the free version? Mm -hmm. Only just alone, or the students uh, play alone, or nothing else? There are several options in this uh, uh, tool, but uh, you have to pay. And I don't want to pay, so only the, the one uh, option that I can use for free, it can be uh, creatively uh, used, how it is, which is really different. So you can try it, how to use it. Okay. Use your mobile phone and 
use this website, www.kahoot.it, and there is the pin of the game. And you have to give a name of your player, and we will see who are here. Waiting for somebody else? Okay, so let's, uh, let's play. The rule is that every question are two times. The first time you have to answer alone and think alone before you answer the question, but after that you will have a short time to speak with other people about the answer and find what's the opinion of others about the topic, about the question, and then you can vote again. So there are intrapersonal learning at first and then interpersonal learning as well. Okay, let's start. Okay, what the statistics say about Gen Z? So, you need to uh, answer some numbers. How many percent of this? Three, uh, two, one. Okay, okay. You cannot see the right answer here. And now you have a short time to discuss to each other. So uh, here are two together. So two. Yes. Everybody sees that it is correct, so you don't know which is the real correct. <laughs> yeah, and now so you need to uh, discuss the answer. What did you vote for, and is it true or not, or two together, two two together? Okay, you have one minute to discuss. Okay, let's go further and try to find the right answer in the second turn, okay? Okay, here there are the answers. Can we get the next turn? So decide what's the right answer and, and the time here. Second chance, yes. <laughs> ah. ah, only two of you voted <laughs> all right. So, okay. <laughs> so, yeah, we can analyze who changed uh, his or her answer based on the first uh, thought uh, and how could you. Uh, uh, convince others about our opinion. So that was one. And try again. Okay, a similar question. So the the next one. Ah, Simon was the first. Okay. Mm hmm. Okay, four, four, seventy. Okay. Okay, now you have short time to discuss again and convince each other about the answers. Okay, close this turn. And this was the answer of this uh, first uh, question. And then again, the same question. Answer. You decided after discussion. Ah, sorry. <laughs> it was sixty, sixty <laughs> percent. Yeah, but we can see changes in the answers. Yeah. Super, uh, and the last one. So this, what is this? This, is, this shows who is the best, who is the uh, um, 
um, fastest and, and uh, who voted right. So the system uh, calculates a point for the fastest and the right answer. And now Silva is the first one. Okay, super. Yeah, Silva. <laughs> yeah, okay, and the last one. Uh, This is just about generation Z. Yes, about generation Z. The statistics. Okay, <laughs> again, 40, uh, 94. Okay, this is the uh, most what got. Okay, let's discuss again. This was the last one. Our last uh, choice to vote. And here, Last second for voting. Okay, and the right answer was 66 only. So it's surprising, surprising, yes. So, yeah, that's all. So this was uh, an example how to collect connect uh, intrapersonal and interpersonal uh, with uh, learning with Kahoot. Uh, this was one uh, example. Um, ah, okay, sorry, sorry, sorry. And the results, what's on the podium? The third place is Vlaska, Yupu. The second one is Silva, and the first one is Ah, no, 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 <laughs> the look, okay, but, okay, then, you can, you can get uh, some kind of uh, Hungarian fans for the <laughs> result, so uh, one is uh, Silva, and I don't know, just oh. choose one. Green one. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and uh, well, who is uh, Retzka? Ah, oh, okay, okay, oh, <laughs> you are welcome. <laughs> so that's the result for today. And um, okay, let's see the other one, uh, which is the same tool, but with different uh, method or, or, or for different purpose. Uh, okay, this is the game number and waiting for players again. The same. New pin game. Ah, eight now. Okay, everybody's in. <laughs> okay, so I use this kind of game when uh, my students don't know anything about the topic, only just some they have some feelings how to solve it. So I teach mathematics, so the question uh, will be mathematical, but don't be afraid. Just try to figure out the answer, and then I will show you what's, how, to, uh, um, how to answer, how to use your mind. There will be pictures, and based on the pictures, you have to answer the question. Don't be afraid, okay? It's a game now. Limit a function. Limit. So it's easy question for mathematics. <laughs> okay, what is the limit of the function as x x approaches uh, infinity? Infinity. What's the limit? Limit of this function. Okay, right answer, okay. <laughs> okay, um, so it is easy uh, to understand. Here is the x, uh, x and the x, y, and the function is somewhere here. Um, I don't remember the um, um, shape of it. And it means that uh, you go on the x, x uh, here in this direction 
where goes the function. And here the function went to minus infinity. So it was the function like that. So it went down. So the limit was minus infinity. Try to figure out the next one. Oh, let's see the answers. Okay, Simon was the first. <laughs> the second. <laughs> the second question. The same function. But when x approaches minus infinity. Minus infinity. Okay, it was similar, uh, the function was similar to this one. When we go x to minus infinity on the x-axis, then we go down on the function. So we go down to minus infinity. So that was the answer right here. Okay, let's see the next. Okay, here is. Simon the first from the mathematics department. <laughs> Let's see the third one. X approaches one from right side. From right side. Okay. You feel, you feel the answers. You are better and better. So here was one on the uh, horizontal X. And here, okay, you come from right side to one. So you go here. So this is the final point that you can reach, which was two. Okay, let's see the next one. Okay. X approaches one from left side. From left side. Okay, almost everybody, four people, uh, find the uh, right answer. So here are one, and we come here from this direction to one, and here we are we are closer to this point, which is at one. Okay. Nothing changed. Um, what happens when X approaches one? Not from left side, not from right side. Super, <laughs> supersonic, <laughs> yes, it doesn't uh, exist because uh, the, uh, uh, there are different kind of uh, answers for the left side and the right side limit. And that's the answer, yes, okay. And the last one, x approaches minus two, minus two. Oh, that does not exist. That's the third answer. Okay, yes, that was one here. Uh, that's not too correct, my uh, drawing here, but this was at minus two and this was one. Okay, that was the answer. Okay, so you can use Kahoot as uh, how uh, your students can discover uh, some knowledge. Uh, so it's an, some kind of experiential uh, game. And let's see our winners. Capybara, the third one, and Android. <laughs> and the first is... <laughs> Simon, <laughs> not a big surprise. Capybara, who is Capybara? Okay, <laughs> again, okay. But <laughs> okay, just choose one. <laughs> okay, super song.
<laughs> okay, so that was Kahoot uh, for today. No more. <laughs> okay. Okay, next one. Uh, genially, uh, I uh, get to know this uh, uh, kind of tool during this uh, pandemic period, and uh, I spend uh, a lot of time to uh, generate some kind of uh, game for my stu uh, students. And uh, there are several possibilities to um, design uh, games. But uh, I found a very special one, which is escape room. Uh, and I made for my student an escape room uh, game. And in this game, I connected the virtual reality with real uh, game. So I would like to show you some uh, parts of this uh, game, how I could uh, do it and design. OK, perfect. OK, just go back. Oh, oopsie. OK, uh, here is uh, the story of the background of uh, the escape room. So uh, the students were locked in the university because they fall asleep in the university building, and they have to escape from, uh, from the building. And then there are several, uh, here is the story, and there are several missions that they have to complete in the university building. So the pictures are from uh, our university. So the, these are uh, some kind of lecture rooms. And here is the mathematical task that they have to solve. And there is the, uh, an answer with a number. And they have to collect the numbers in each um, mission. And then if they uh, find the answers for all of these um, questions, there is a final mission. And here, yeah, it's morning again, and then they have to uh, write the, uh, a number that they counted uh, from the answers. And here, OK, we can write the number and press OK. And yoo we made it. We can go out of the university. It's open again. But there is no end because the story is continuing. And here, OK, uh, we can um, open a yeah, uh, video. And here, I made a video the university building, and I explain them a place where they have to go, and there they can find some answers for their uh, questions, and there you can sign a book that they found the final uh, station. So that was uh, one example in my practice that I used uh, for my students, how to practice and motivate them. So this is part of the homework, right? Yes, it's part of a uh, homework, so they can do it alone at home when they have time. Yeah. Yeah, that was. That, that's our uh, university building in Dior. Yes. OK. The next one is Time Toast. Uh, you can create a time toast with this uh, tool uh, very easily. I use it um, in mathematics teaching uh, when at the beginning, at first at the beginning of the semester, and then I uh, put uh, a sign every week, which is the topic for that week, and where are the exams, where will be the midterm test, and so on. So my students can uh, all the time uh, check it, uh, what's the topic and uh, what to do that uh, week. So it's a timeline that uh, you can use easily. Okay. 
Next one. Mind map, mind master, these are similar tools that uh, you can use um, uh, in your teaching. You can create such kind of uh, mind maps. If you know this um, uh, concept, uh, mind maps, uh, it, uh, there is a core concept and you uh, collect different kind of other concepts and you can connect uh, them. And um, these tools are perfect uh, for this uh, uh, purpose. And there is another one as well, uh, Mindomo, uh, that we can use. Here are different kind of uh, mind maps. And this is one that I used uh, in my lessons. Um, it shows that how the different topics are connected in my uh, in my uh, lessons. For example, here are some uh, topics who uh, are connected to mathematics too, so that will be uh, used again in the next semester, or there are other kind of topics up there which uh, are used more times during the semester, and so on. So this um, kind of um, uh, mind map uh, is used during the semester more times and we go back and back and try to find the place of the different kind of uh, uh, knowledge. So it's, I think it is the best um, option how to support um, the connections, uh, to show the connections of the different kind of knowledge. Um, to Generation Z and visual, visual um, ad. It, it uh, promotes that uh, characteristics. It's, it's a huge, uh, huge uh, topic how to um, support uh, visual um, knowledge and visual skills of our students, but it's another uh, topic of a workshop. So, and the next one. Uh, Batchcraft, uh, how to give feedback and assessment um, uh, to students. This is uh, a tool to uh, give uh, um, some kind of present uh, gift uh, to your uh, students. So you can give badges, badges uh, to them, online badges, so they can collect. Uh, them and uh, yeah, here I created uh, one badge, Generation Z. So uh, if you oh, okay, if you go to uh, this website, then you can use that code and you can get this badge for gift. But you can uh, use uh, badges if the um, students. Uh, accomplished uh, something, a task or uh, homework or something uh, did uh, right, so they were active during a lesson, so it's some kind of uh, feedback assessment if they did uh, well that uh, task. So you can create a code and if they know the code then you can get it or uh, you can do uh, several type of badges. Uh, you can ask them uh, different kind of questions and if they can answer then they can get the badge. So it's for assessment. Okay. Let's see the next one. If you haven't heard about learning apps you have to try it. There are several options, several games that can be created really, really easily to match different kind of answers or find the right answers or there are um, um, uh, pictures and put them in timeline or and so on. So you have to try it because there are many, many options, learning apps. That, uh, it can be used in several languages, so in Slovenian as well, so not only in English. 
Next one is Quizlet, which is used uh, frequently by language teachers and maybe mathematics teachers and so on. Here is uh, one uh, example that I made. Uh, you can use it. This is the short uh, version of uh, the website. And uh, when we use, uh, here are several um, options, but as uh, I used it, there are flashcards which means that there is a card, a virtual card. On one side of the card, there is a, a concept. And on the other side of the card, there is the definition of the concept. So the, the students can turn and uh, back and forth, and they can check their knowledge. So you, during uh, the learning process, they can use this uh, kind of cards, so flashcards. I can uh, show you easily how to use it. Okay, here is the concept. Uh, here is the concept and the other, oh, no. Okay, uh, here is, oh, okay, now it is, no, no, no play. Okay, just shuffle. Oh. Yeah, now it works. So here is Q and was uh, the definition, so you can uh, turn first and back these cards. It's for practice for students, and they can use it at home or during the lesson as well. So these are cards, flashcards. Okay. Next one, action bound. I saw that somebody uh, used uh, this one of a uh, tool. Uh, it's really cool for uh, joining the learning environment with uh, outside of the building environment. So in this case, uh, students work together in groups and they have one phone with this application and they go to the city and solve a different kind of uh, task that you uh, create before and uh, they go place to place and try to find the answers in the city. So they have to collaborate together and they don't have to be in the uh, uh, educational institutions. Uh, yeah. So if you are creative, you can create such kind of uh, uh, games. Next one is so creative. It's similar to Kahoot, uh, but um, there are several um, free versions, and during the um, game, you can see who are the best. So, so every time you can see uh, everybody's uh, results. Yeah, and Flipgrid. It's um, connected to videos. If you pose a question to your um, um, students and you would like to answer uh, in a, a video, uh, for example, at home, so not only uh, in lesson, but for homework, then they can put uh, their videos into this um, uh, program and they can uh, share with either, each other and they can show uh, the answers. So it's cool for uh, videos. Another one tool is Padlet. Uh, there are several options that you can see here. The, uh, here are timelines as well, but uh, a really cool uh, purpose when you need a map, you can use an online map uh, to explain something or a different kind of uh, canvas, streams, so you can collect different, uh, different information in this um, uh, tool. So there are several options in it. And the last one is Story uh, uh, spheres. Uh, 
it's, I think, a more advanced uh, tool than uh, you use it as a teacher. You use your mobile phone and you make a, a picture, a, th a 3D picture about a place, and you, then you put that picture in this um, um, in this um, program, and you put uh, signs on the picture that uh, our students can open, and these are audio uh, signs, so you can uh, record something. Why is it important that place or explain something uh, on that um, on that um, uh, place? So here are uh, signs for audio. Okay, so this was the last one, and we are close to the end, and the question was at the beginning, face-to-face, -face, uh, opposite online, and I see, I, I think that we can combine uh, both of them and use together, because bo uh, both of them are preferences of our students, and uh, they are not uh, opposite at all. So if you use this kind of tools, you can use them to give homework for them at home, but you can use them in your lessons when you are face to face. So I think there were several uh, tools that you can try and use uh, in the future, and I hope this was a starting point in your, um, some kind of starting point in your profession to try more tools. I hope if uh, you use only one tools of these big collections that it was worthy for me. So not, don't use all of them because there are several, but just find minimum one which fits to your interest and where you are interested to, to put effort to do a new game for your uh, students. So that's my answer for, for the post question. And now it's time for your questions. If you, if you have any, then just ask me and I would like to answer it if I can.